representing the IVS squad this morning and or afternoon and or evening whenever you're watching this. <laughs> if you get IVS, drop a poop emoji in the comments below. Hey. <laughs> book besties. Um, my name is Angie. This is my channel, Maybe I'll Read Today, where we talk about books that I may or may not have read. And today we're going to be doing my first and last book haul of 2022. Like many a booktuber, bookstagrammer, book talker, I have acquired many books in the past since I've joined this lovely little community. Because if there's anything that like a book community guarantees, it's that you are going to start purchasing books that you have zero time to actually read. And that's horrible for my wallet and horrible for my space because I'm running out of said space. That being said, I did give myself some like wiggle room for the first two months of the year because it was the holidays and then it was my birthday and I deserve to buy things that I enjoy, which primarily includes nail polish, books, and yarn. So that's what I've been acquiring lately, but now it stops. The books from this haul start from December 17th to like February 11th, so like a good two and a half months. And that's mostly to make me feel better that I've acquired this many books in about three months. It's probably still really bad if I think about it too much, but at least it's not like a one month haul of like 50 books. That'd be too much for me. So this is to try and prove to myself that I don't have that much of a problem, even though I know I have a problem. Um, that we're gonna fix starting today. So the first book on my little pile, these aren't in any particular order because I'm not organized enough and I didn't think that far ahead into the future um, when I bought these books to like put them in chronological order because that would have been great, but I didn't do that. So that's on me. The first book in this haul is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I got this book because it was chunky and it was $17 and I was like, that's the deal if I ever saw one. I haven't read it yet, obviously, but from what I understand, it follows like a world where gods lost their power and generations later, our main character, Davian, finds out that he um, is part god, question mark, and then goes and starts a revolution to help gods gain their power again. Sounds super dope, sounds super violent and cool, and the cover's really cool. They're like, just like little gladiators. I think that's neat. I love a good fantasy, love a good like revolution fantasy kind of deal. And it was also, I also got this because it was between this and The Devil House by John and or Josh Darnielle. I don't know his name, but that book was like half this book size and $28. And this book is this size and 17. So I was like, well, I'm just going to get The Devil House from the library then. The next book that I have in my little pile is Horror Hotel by Victoria Fulton and Faith McLaren. This book was a pre-order and I pre-ordered it just on the basis that it was described as a YA Blair Witch project. And this, this book follows like a bunch of YouTube ghost hunters as they go into this scary hotel. That's it, that's all I know about it. And I pre-ordered it on that alone. Love a good ghost hunting story. <gasps> Something just fell while I was talking. That's so scary. No, it was just gravity. Love a good ghost hunting story. Would love to go ghost hunting one day. No one asked, but here's my my take on ghosts. Um, I believe in ghosts. I just don't think they're scary because they're just dead people. So like, what are they gonna do to me? Absolutely nothing. They can probably like pull my hair and push me. But besides that, it's like, whatever. So would love to go ghost hunting one day. I think it'd be really fun um, to speak to a ghost and be like, hey, what's up? What's it like being dead? And then they're gonna be like, <laughs> And then everyone's gonna be like, oh shit, did you hear that? And it's, it's, <laughs> that's my stance on ghosts. The next book on this pile, I already read, I already did a review on it in my January wrap up, but that is The City Beautiful by Aiden Polidoros. This book follows a young Jewish boy uh, who's living in Chicago in the 1890s and who is trying to solve the murder of his best friend as well as the like disappearances of other young Jewish boys in his community. This was super super good. I mentioned it in the video that I like reviewed it on uh, that if you liked the cemetery boys I feel like you would really enjoy this book. I gave it five stars. Next book that I got was The Secret Life of Groceries by Benjamin Lore. This is a non-fiction book about grocery stores 
and all the like behind the scenes stuff that makes a grocery store happen. One of my favorite kinds of nonfiction books are nonfiction books about very specific topics, mostly because um, I feel like books about very specific topics, you can really tell how much the author really cares about said topic. Otherwise, it wouldn't be writing like a 300 page book about it. So it's just really like the passion and the love and the care and the research that an author puts into a very specific nonfiction book or about in a nonfiction book about a very specific topic that I really enjoy reading. So um, grocery stores, I don't know, we see them every day. Let's, I'm, I'm gonna learn about them, I guess. The next book that I got was also another pre-order and that was The Beast of a Little Land by Ju Hea Kim. This book came out in the US like last year but I pre-ordered the UK edition because I just think it's a lot prettier. It's very similar to the US edition, which I'll put up somewhere. I just like how this is like symmetrical and it looks more like a completed tapestry as opposed to like the singular tiger. It looks like you just cropped out a part of a tapestry. I just think it looks nicer. But this book has been described or has been compared to Pachinko and I really enjoy Pachinko. So I wanted to get this book and check it out. Uh, since then gotten really mixed reviews so I don't know how I'm gonna feel about it, but I'm still gonna try and give it a shot. Also, it's just really pretty, so I feel like even if I don't like it, I'm probably gonna keep it because look at it. She's beautiful. Next book that I got is Notes from the Burning Age by Claire North. This is a fantasy question mark. I think I got it in the fantasy section. I don't know if it's actually fantasy, but it follows Ven, who is a holy man, who was also a translator of ancient texts and he is tasked with translating a bunch of like ancient texts that a revolutionary found. The more he learns from these texts, the more his like worldview changes. So I think it's about him having to decide with like publishing these translations and changing the world or like maintaining his worldview and ideas and stuff like that. I'm not entirely sure. I really like books about um how do I describe that? I really like books about religion, but not religious books, more about like characters who have fallen from religion or characters like who are gods who are not more immortal, who are like who fall from grace. I think stories like that are really interesting, which is why I picked up this one and why I picked up the fantasy that I showed a little bit ago. Next book. Uh, in this haul is a uh, Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This book is a pandemic fic, but not about a pandemic, more about like the aftermath of a pandemic. And it follows a group of artists who like travel and just like try to keep art um, and theater alive. I heard it's really beautiful and it's a really nice take on like the human experience. I haven't picked it up yet. It was part of my February TBR and well, We'll get to that, maybe. <laughs> maybe in, if I even actually bothered to do a wrap-up video, we'll get to, to how February went for my brain. But just as a sneak peek, I didn't pick this up. The next book was also part of my February TBR and I also haven't picked it up yet. And that was Anne of Green Gables by L.M. Montgomery. Um, this book follows Anne, who is an orphan who gets adopted by these two siblings. And it's just like her coming of age and her being part of this family. Um, I've seen the show, as I mentioned before, and the show is really cute and really lovely. And so I got this book to like get more into the world and I haven't, I haven't entered that world yet because, well, next book is another fantasy. No one is surprised, but that's uh, Mordu by Alex Febby or Alex Phoebe. I don't know how to pronounce his last name and I apologize. If I said, if both are wrong, I apologize. And if one of them was right, hey, I got it. This book I picked up because a booktuber mentioned it in their haul or in their TBR video. The reason I picked it up, I have no idea what it's about, but uh, the booktuber read the first sentence of the side blurb, this, this little guy, um, and that was enough for me to pick it up, and so I'm just going to read it to you and see if it's enough for you to want to pick it up. Um, but the first line is, God is dead, his corpse hidden in the catacombs beneath Mordu. And that's that on that. Like I mentioned literally like 30 seconds ago, I love books about religion and about like fallen gods and dead gods and kind of how that affects society in different ways. Um, I think it's super fascinating. The next book in my haul is The Lady Joker by Karu Takamura. This is a thriller book. I picked it up because in the blurb it said that it was inspired by the true crime event of the Monster of 21 Faces 
which if you don't know about is a true crime event in I want to say in the 80s in Japan, but that might not be correct, where a group of people kidnapped the CEO of a candy company and like basically just like caused havoc in Japan uh, for like a good month. And they called themselves the monster of 21 faces and no one knows if there were 21 people, how many people were part of that group. Um, but it was, it was kind of a cool true crime event story in the way that no one was necessarily harmed except for that CEO who was kidnapped and there wasn't any like serial killerisms or like extreme violence it was just a group of people who was kind of fucking with a CEO and a candy conglomerate um a kind of like Robin Hood-ish true crime event in history so I picked this up on the basis of I love true crime that's just a bunch of people playing Robin Hood I think that's so sexy of them and we'll see if this book is equally as sexy as the monster 21 faces who knows it does say volume one on the top of the book which kind of concerns me because I didn't know it was going to be a series but hey if there's any kind of series that I'm going to be willing to pick up for the rest of my life it's going to be a series about people Robin Hooding a conglomerate monopoly company and fucking shit up for general society. I think that's very sexy of them. The last book in my haul is The Hour of the Witch by Chris Bojalian. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm sorry, sir. I got this book from my local Barnes & Noble and they were doing like a blind date with a book kind of situation. And this book was all wrapped up, super cute and described as uh, early, hist early American historical fantasy, um, a cult, and I think family drama. And I was like, that sounds like my exact cup of tea. So I picked it up, I opened it. I'm super excited because this has been on my TBR for a bit and I just haven't picked it up because, I don't know, for the same reason that I haven't picked up anything for my TBR. But it takes place in the 1600s in New England and it follows a young girl who is accused of being a witch and kind of just like the, the drama of being accused of being a witch in the 1600s. It's not a good time. As you may have realized, I really like history. I think history is neat. Early American history is kind of interesting in some ways and frustrating in most. <laughs> but I do like reading about the Salem witch trials. Way more tragic than movies make them appear to be, but also in many ways way more hilarious. Um, because the Salem witch trials can really be summed up. This is not about the book anymore. I'm just talking. The Salem witch trials can really be summed up as a bunch of girls who were just committed to the bit. They were just bored and they said, let's accuse some people of witches, and they just committed to that bit until it, it went too far, and they said, oh no. <laughs> um, and afford unfortunately, as, as part of their bit, many people died, and that's very unfortunate and sad. However, I will tell you one little like side story about the Salem witch trials, which I think is hilarious, the way that people just didn't care and didn't do math. One of the women who were accused, uh, the girlies told, the townspeople that this woman has been doing witchcraft for like 34 years and according to like birth records that woman at the time was only like 28 or 30 and instead of doing the math and figuring that out people were just like oh yeah that checks out she's definitely a witch which very unfortunate for her because i think they did kill her but also just kind of funny how committed to the bit these girlies were because i think it was one girl who said that and i was like oh girl you went too far with the bit you didn't even do the math right how embarrassing that's like i've never done improv but that's like if you were doing improv with a group and they were like the improv scenario is where in 1600s Massachusetts and then you walk on stage acting like it's 1930s New York. Come on girl, like do your research. I don't have them next to me so I can't actually show you them and I'm too lazy to get up. But quick library haul, I got the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I've never read them before so that's exciting for me. I might do a vlog, I might not, who knows. That's my haul, that's it. Don't ask me when I'm gonna pick these books up because I don't even know. But uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day. Let me know if any of these books that I, that I, that I, that I recently purchased uh, interest you. Or if you've read them, that'd be great. Give me a quick, quick six word review. Don't give me any book recommendations in the comments because that would make the whole don't buy books thing a lot harder. If you're like, hey, there's this book that looks like something that you'd really like, don't do that. I'm trying really hard to be good from now on. No more books.